And in 1970, uh, you founded the Dolphin Project, a group that aims to educate the public about captivity and free captive uh, dolphins. Uh, you were featured in the Academy Award-winning film The Cove, 2009, about the animal uh, dolphin drive hunting that goes on in Taiji, Japan. At the request of Mr. O'Berry, we're going to show an eight-minute video about his visit to the Dolphinarium in Harderwijk. And then Mr. O'Berry will have some minutes to make some remarks, and then the members of parliament can pose their questions. Um, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, then please start the video if... Do we have to go there to see it? Sorry, yeah, we're going to see it. Yeah, down there. Oh, I see. I started off capturing dolphins. I went to work at the Miami Sea Aquarium in the early 1960s, and my job uh, was capturing dolphins. And we captured maybe a hundred of them in that first year. I was promoted to dolphin trainer, and then uh, the, the Flipper TV series came along. Fabulous Dolphin. What kind of a movie is this? It's a brand new entertainment experience, like a fresh ocean breeze. So I used to capture dolphins and train them. Today I do the exact opposite. I untrain them and put them back where they belong. We were invited to go backstage and inspect it. The idea was to try to convince us that this is not a circus, it's a zoo. And of course, when they invite you at 4.30 in the afternoon, the show is over and you're not going to see the circus. So that's part of the trick. So this is their natural environment, they say. This is the tank? Yeah. yeah. There is nothing natural about this place. Do not be fooled by this so-called lagoon. That lagoon is actually a concrete tank. It's not a square tank like most of them. It's kind of spread out to trick you into thinking they're in a lagoon. They're in nature. They are in captivity in a tank. For 75 euros, you can swim with the dolphins. Oh, I see. We're looking at them. Tend to have one sit on your head. Yes. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? Yes. I never actually got inside. I got as far as the restaurant. So I've never saw the dolphins or never saw, you know, the behind the scenes. They don't want me to see that because I know what I'm looking at. I would have immediately gone to the fish house. That's the nerve central for these places. And that's where you find the log books. I would have immediately picked up the logbook and you can read day by day and find out who is sick, who's not eating, what's going on. You also look for medication in that. That's where it's kept in the fish house. So I would have immediately asked them to take me there. And I would probably have been kicked out at that point. Tijdens zijn stage heeft Nesim de kans om dichter bij de dolfijnen te komen. Er zijn geen shows, dus ze zitten met z'n allen in een ander bad dat achter het showbassin is. Blijven die, de, blijven die dolfijnen de hele nacht hier? Ja. Hier zwemmen ze dan de hele dag. In deze drie kleine baden. Well, my wife has been uh, involved in these dolphin issues for many years. And she recorded the show, and I saw it. I can tell you, this is a circus. It is not a zoo, it's a circus with performing circus clowns. They have never seen the sky, some of them. Of course, they have the ones that have been in the lagoon, but they have never, never 
experience the natural rhythms of the sea and the tide and the current, they don't even know what that is. They think that the roof is the sky. These are freaks that we have created for our amusement. There's nothing educational about it. Dolfijnen in gevangenschap, is dat een goed idee? En jij? Dat is een van de slechtste ideeën die de mensen ooit uh, hebben gehad. Dat zijn nou bij uitstek de dieren die enorme uh, watergebieden nodig hebben om echt te kunnen zwemmen. Niet uh, rondjes in zo'n dolfinarium. Het zijn ook hele speelse, intelligente dieren die echt letterlijk uh, de ruimte nodig hebben. Zowel in, in lichamelijke als in geestelijke zin. Wij zijn godzijdank bezig om uh, het gebruik van uh, dieren in circussen terug te dringen. Maar helaas, helaas, helaas laten we dus wel dat, dat dolfijnencircus... dat laten wij niet alleen bestaan. Nee, dat mag uh, uitbreiden. Omdat zij het woord circus weten te vermijden. Maar het is niet meer dan een circus het dolfinarium. En op grond daarvan zouden we het ogenblikkelijk opgedoekt moeten worden. No, I don't think the dolphins enjoy the shows. They're, they're doing it. Look, dolphins are different than dogs. For example, a dog will do tricks for a pat on the head. Everything these dolphins do is for food reward. They don't get fed unless they do tricks. It's tricks for food. In that way, it's a, it's a circus and it's abusive. But somehow the government gave them uh, a status of a zoo instead of a circus. So I hope the Dutch people will think about that at election time. It makes you angry, right? It does. It's so, so unfair and so it's just, it, it, it's wrong. And they, you know, they lie and they cover it up and they protect the corporation. It's all about, it's all about that, protecting the corporation and jobs and money and money and jobs. I've seen it a thousand times in the last 50 years I've been doing this. So there's nothing new going on here. If you think about it and you're honest with yourself, you would have to admit that what you just witnessed, the dolphin show, is a spectacle of dominance. And that's what we're doing to our children, to their young mind. We're teaching them that dominance is good, dominance is right, dominance works. This is very important. It is not just about the dolphins, it's about thousands, hundreds of thousands of young Dutch children who come through these gates and leave here thinking, believing that captivity is okay, that abusing nature is okay, as long as we call it research, education, and conservation. Hardback has a contract with the school system. A lot of dolphinariums would go out of business if it wasn't for those contracts with the school. Uh, if they depended solely on walk-up business, they probably would have shut their gates by now. So I'm hoping that um, the parents are listening to me and will find a way to break that contract between Hardvac and the school system. This is not an educational experience. This is the opposite. The solution is, number one, stop capturing dolphins. Stop inbreeding dolphins. Stop captive breeding. Number two, those that can be released back into the wild should be. Number three, those that cannot be should be transferred to a more normal, natural environment where they can retire with dignity and quality. And those places exist. The solution is within the reach of the Dutch people. This sounds very simplistic, but the solution is don't buy a ticket for a dolphin show anywhere. If you travel to Orlando, Florida, do not buy a ticket for SeaWorld or to uh, Laura Park or, or, or Hardback. Yeah, it sounds very simplistic, don't buy a ticket, but that actually works. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. O'Berry, if you'd like to add something to this, uh, to this video, then I give you uh, the floor. Please use the uh, mic. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah, there's so much more to be said about this. Um, uh, the, 
One of the strong points I want to make and was not made in this, I, I don't think, is uh, the, this is not an animal rights issue alone. It's really about education and what are we teaching our children. We're living in a time where the oceans are collapsing. Fish stocks are collapsing. Uh, pollution in the ocean is rampant. This is being perpetuated by adults, adults who have gone through these dolphinariums since 1938 and now have a, they will become the people driving these super trawlers. They're the people who are going to be in charge of the planet. And we need to teach our children well. And the dolphinarium doesn't do that. It does the opposite. You walk out of there thinking this is where they belong. They're here to amuse us. We get whatever we want. You know, and the, the Dolphinarium yesterday told me, well, if we didn't have these kids coming here, they would never be able to um, understand anything about dolphins. They wouldn't know about dolphins. And that's simply not true. I, I have an 11-year-old daughter who knows everything about dinosaurs. She, she's never seen a dinosaur do, jumping through a hoop of fire. And, uh, so you don't have to have animals performing for us in order, to, in order to educate people about dolphins. And a good example of that, by the way, is the, uh, we were talking about this this morning, is the most uh, successful aquarium in America, the Monterey Aquarium. Uh, whenever I've been there, the line goes all the way around the block. People are lined up always to get in there. And they have no live dolphins. Yeah, there's dolphin exhibit. They have dolphins hanging from the ceiling, very lifelike dolphins, uh, many species. And that's all you really need. You don't really need them doing these stupid tricks for us. The dolphin is the only animal in the zoo that has to do tricks to be fed. What, which other animal has to do tricks in order to be fed at the zoo? None, none of the animals in the zoo have to do tricks to be fed. So when we say this is a zoo and not a dolphinarium, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but the, the reality is what all we're doing is bastardizing the definition of a zoo. And we're doing a disservice to our children by doing this. <clears throat> and I've said this over and over in, in America, and I'm not getting anywhere there because uh, I mean, there's a lot of hope in Holland. Holland is probably the most progressive place I've been in the world. A very open-minded people, a very open society, willing to take, uh, uh, conduct uh, social experiments and such. And uh, I'm hoping that, that Holland will be the first dolphinarium-free uh, country one that closes the dolphin. This is the first country that had dolphins in Europe. I'm probably the guy who captured the dolphins for hardback initially. Back in the early 60s, that's what I did. We were capturing them and exporting them to Germany and wherever. So I feel a very, when I walk into hardback, I feel a very deep responsibility because I know I captured those dolphins. They were, they were swimming freely in, in, in uh, Biscayne Bay doing what dolphins do, living their life. They have lives, they have things to do. Um, they're free-ranging, free-ranging creatures. They travel about 40 miles a day doing many, many different things. They could be 10 miles away surfing or cooperatively feeding a few hours away or just resting all together. And, and, and that's living. Living is doing things. The dolphins at Hardvac and all of these other dolphinariums, uh, they're just surviving and doing tricks for food and miseducating all of our children along the way. So I'm opposed to it, of course, uh, because I know, I know, that I, I, the reason I quit, I was the highest paid animal trainer in the world when I walked away from that. Um, I used to drive a brand new Porsche every year, whether I needed one or not. Today, I ride a bicycle, but I'm happier because I'm dealing with the truth. So if what Hardback is saying is true, that they're happy and there's no problem, I would be doing that. I could walk out of here today and find a Swiss uh, 
investor and open up my own politically correct dolphinarium in the Bahamas and make $5 million a year. I could do that over the, my, the phone, but I wouldn't be able to sleep at night because it's wrong. And, and, and uh, I have an 11-year-old daughter, as I said. I don't want her miseducated. And I, I'm sure the Dutch people don't want their children being miseducated. So, I, so yesterday, we were there at the Dolphinarium, and uh, many, many protesters were there, and the Dolphinarium, and you have this conflict constantly on the weekends going on. And, and so I had a thought, I had an idea, maybe we can find some common ground with the Dolphinarium if they would cooperate, and we do this together as a project, as a social experiment. It will get, uh, that story will go all over the world if it happens, and they're considering it. And the, the, the project I'm proposing is to give two or three of the dolphins at Hardvac a sabbatical for two years, let's say. Because the veterinarian and everybody there has said they're very, very happy inside this building. Okay, that's their opinion. I say they're ha they would be happier in a in nature, in a, a real a real lagoon, one that is in the ocean, not landlocked, uh, where they can experience the natural rhythms of the sea and the tides and current, and be fed live fish, catch their own fish, and live out their life with some quality and dignity. And more importantly, be identified properly. At Hardback, they're identified as ambassadors. They're not ambassadors at all. They are victims. And bus children, bus the same children to these sanctuaries and let them learn the truth for the first time. We have dolphins that were born inside of a building. Now they're out here in nature. Um, they're not doing tricks anymore. We wish we could set them free, but we can't because of what we did to them. They don't even know what a live fish is. They have no idea about uh, predator avoidance and which fish to eat, which fish not to eat. So the children can learn the truth for the first time. And by the way, I'm gonna feed the dolphins now, children. And when I do, please do not applaud. We should never applaud any wild animal performing for us. That's one of the things they're doing wrong at all of these places. It just reinforces this uh, insidious utilitarian perception of nature. So it's a much, much bigger issue, I suggest, than just an animal rights issue. Okay. Thank you. I would like to invite the members of parliament to pose some questions to Mr. O'Berry. So, Mr. Yeah. here. I'll start with my first question. Yeah. Thank you for showing us the movie, Mr. O'Berry, and your actual words in this. Um, my first question is about the boundaries you have with animals. Uh, you are against captivity of the dolphins in the dolphinarium, um, but, uh, and the reason you uh, give us is because they don't show natural habits. Um, uh, they're being fed uh, by people and they have to do some tricks for it. And, um, um, uh, they're getting, being applauded when they are doing tricks for us as people. Uh, but you can see that also to like when we have cats or dogs at home, they um, uh, are there for us. They're in a certain form of captivity. Uh, we feed them uh, not live animals, for example, but also uh, uh, that food. Um, so is it only in the dolphinarium where you're fighting against, or is it more for animals you are, that we as people held in captivity? Well, I, I focus in on, on the dolphin captivity issue. There are many, many people all over the world working on those other issues. I, I, but please don't misunderstand me. I am concerned about those things, but I try to, I'm as concerned about homelessness. I mean, when I'm in Miami, I'm stepping over people on the sidewalk. And there's something wrong with that. So I, I, I have the same compassion, but I focus in on the dolphin captivity issue, and I've been doing that since um, Earth Day 1970. And I'm going to stay focused on that until we bring about some change. And there is a lot of change coming. SeaWorld is collapsing now because people are not buying tickets. 
So to, to answer your question, I focus in on the dolphin captivity issue. Thank you. Mr. Wassenberg. Thank you. Um, Mr. Berry, um, you said this is no animal right, uh, rights thing, but it's about education. But of course, it's an animal welfare thing. Um, the Dolphinarium states it's very difficult to measure the welfare of uh, dolphins in captivity. It's difficult to read the behavior of these uh, dolphins. Um, it's, it's hard to tell, says the uh, Dolphinarium, if the uh, welfare of the uh, dolphins is disturbed or not. Or not. Um, is it possible, according to you, that dolphins can adapt to an unnatural environment like the Dolphinarium? Okay. So, Barry? No, I think they, ca they cannot. They can survive, but are they happy? No, I don't think so. Uh, but look, this is not a question of science. This is a question of ethics. And uh, I didn't say that this is not an animal rights issue. I'm, I'm saying that it's not only an animal rights issue. It, that, that's part of it, yes. But it's connected to those children who keep that multi-billion dollar industry going. What are we doing to our children with these places? Yeah. Mr. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Oberi, what, what I'm curious about is um, the success of the Dolphinarium is actually uh, because of the work that you used to do with Flipper, for example. Uh, and I'm curious how must it feel for you that uh, one of the things you're fighting against at the moment is something you caused actually by yourself many, many years ago. So how must, must that feel for you? Well, in the beginning, I, I, uh, I remember clearly uh, in 1970, the 70s especially, uh, it was so difficult. Because, and I was coming from a place of guilt. And I was trying to get people to stop buying tickets. And I would stand out there, you know, protesting the Miami Sea Aquarium where I was the head trainer earlier. Uh, and I was standing there alone. It took 20 years just to make this an issue. It was a non-issue. When I started doing this, there was no such thing as PETA or Greenpeace or Sea Shepherd. I had to do this alone, and people thought I was crazy. Today, it's a mainstream issue. I wasn't crazy after all. Well, uh, <laughs> that's debatable. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, people are catching on. People are catching on. Uh, the times are changing, and, and I'm just hoping that uh, Holland... Uh, is the first country to stand up and say no to Spain. All the money that's made here goes to Spain. It's shipped back to Spain. And you're left with this bad publicity and a lot of protesters. They have nothing to gain by this. Holland has nothing to gain by this. A few jobs, and it helps the economy somewhat in Hardback, that lovely town of Hardback. But that can be replaced by cruelty-free entertainment. Water parks, I, could, when I, I live in Denmark half of the time, my wife is Danish, and we go to these water parks and there's always lines of people and it's, it's fun and it makes a lot of money and it can be replaced with something like that. The dolphins could go to a sanctuary and I mentioned earlier this sanctuary, I, I, I know where it is, the water's crystal clear. We can have cameras underwater, we can have cameras topside, 24 hours a day for two years. This is part of the experiment and broadcast to the, to the Dutch people. At the end of two years, I talked to the television station, by the way, the one I did a few nights ago, it was a live night show. Uh, they would like to cover this for two years, the whole thing. And at the end of the two years, let's let the Dutch people vote. Are the dolphins happier in the sanctuary or are they better inside the building? Let the Dutch people decide, have a big vote instead of a handful of politicians behind closed doors. Let's have the Dutch people decide which is better. Which is better for the children, which is better for Holland, which is better for the dolphins. That's the experiment I'm proposing. I did it in a casual way when I was there, but we're developing a more formal, uh, and, 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 and the Dolphinarium are open for this, so there is some hope this will happen. And if it happens, I can tell you, it's gonna send a powerful, positive message to the rest of the world about Holland's respect for nature. You have everything to gain from that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mossmer, you have an, another question. Before I give you the floor, I would like to welcome our other yep. member of parliament, 
Mrs. Kozakaya of the Democrat 66. Thank you. Um, Mr. Berry, um, you said that uh, the dolphins are not used to live in the ocean and, for example, they never saw a living fish and they don't know what to eat or not. And your proposal is to send them on a sabbatical for, for example, uh, two years. Uh, is it possible, do you think, to, to, to teach them a natural life again so that after this sabbatical, two years, four years, that they can eventually be sent out to the wild, to the oceans again. No, I mean, I'm not we are not proposing that. There are many dolphins in captivity who are not mentally healthy, and I suggest that the ones that are born inside of a building that have no connection to nature don't represent dolphins in the wild any more than Mickey Mouse represents a real mouse. They're caricatures of dolphins. They, they've lost it. They never had it, actually. So the only thing you can do for them is to, and that's part of the, that's part of the, um, when children come there, it's part of what you tell them, part of the education process. Explain to them why they can't be free and that we're involved in birth control. There is no reason in the world, none, for a dolphin to be born inside of a building. There is no, not for science, not for education, not for entertainment. There is no reason for them to be born in captivity. And so at the sanctuary, we will do research on birth control for dolphins and let them live out their life with quality and dignity, and they will die off eventually, and this problem will go away in the peaceful, quiet way. We did this in Switzerland. I, I did the same, this is the same scene, different countries. Switzerland, they're closed. They had dolphinariums there, Kinder Zoo, and the, uh, um, I forgot the other one, big amusement park. They stayed in business because it's an amusement park and they make a lot of money and the dolphins are like incidental, so it didn't hurt them to go out of business. But when they, went out, when they closed the dolphinarium, they just send the dolphins to another building somewhere in Germany or somewhere else. I hope Holland doesn't do that. Uh, yeah, Holland is different. Holland can do this. This is a simple thing. This experiment is a simple thing. We have to admit we made a mistake. Look, we started doing this in 1938. That's when the first dolphinarium opened in St. Augustine, Florida. It's been a failed experiment. It's time to admit that. And we're going to do the best we can. And it's going to phase out. It's going to take many years to phase it out. Actually, if uh, Hardeback kept the dolphins there, if they got involved in uh, birth control and stopped breeding them, I think uh, that would be extremely helpful, too. That's a breeding farm. They masturbate them. They uh, get the sperm, and they get involved in artificial insemination. For what purpose? So they can create more and put them in more buildings. They sent one to Spain, the female, that killed a, a calf there. These are psychotic animals because habitat dictates behavior. That's a given in science. Habitat dictates behavior. If you remove them from this unnatural habitat and put them in a very natural, normal environment, their behavior will change. So, so what you say is these animals are, let's say, scarred for life, and they are social animals, so it's also not possible to introduce them, one animal, for example, in a, in a group uh, that's living in the wild. So, because they are so scarred mentally? And uh, that's not their home range. It would be better if they could go to their home range, but they have no home range. They're, they look like dolphins, but they're really freaks that we've created. They don't know anything. They know nothing. You know more about the ocean than they do. You can't fix that. You can all, the best you can do is let them live out their life, identify them properly to the children, so they go, oh, now I get it. I get it now, yeah. Let's quit, let's quit lying to our children and tricking them uh, for corporate greed. Our children go through these places, they go out in the world, and they get involved in international corporate greed. That's what's destroying the planet. We're miseducating our children. And here we have an opportunity to change that. Probably the only country in the world that can do that is Holland. Thank you. Mrs. Koska, do you have a question or you want to listen? And I give the floor to uh, Mr. Hirma, if you have another one. Yeah, I've got an, another question. Um, I assume that you have visited uh, multiple dolphin area uh, throughout the world. Um, from your point of view, one is worse than, than another. Uh, so where do you arrange Hardewijk in your point of view? It's not the worst. The worst is uh, in Indonesia. 
our colleagues at the Jakarta Animal Aid Network uh, and Dolphin Project are working together to stop the last traveling dolphin show in the world where dolphins uh, are put in trucks and trucked all over Indonesia and they dig a hole in the ground and they put a rubber liner inside of it. They fill it full of city water and bags of salt. Then they put a tent up and for about a week you have dolphins literally jumping through hoops of fire and and miseducating all of the kids in Indonesia, by the way, where the forest is being destroyed, and they find nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with this show, and there's nothing wrong with tearing down the uh, palm, you know, the, uh, the, well, you know what I mean. So I would rate this one, uh, they're, they're all basically the same. And when you ask me that question, uh, when I hear these questions, I always try to see it from the dolphin's point of view. From their point of view, you would have to get inside the tank and look around. There's nothing there but a concrete box. That concrete box could be in the Antwerp Zoo, which closed, by the way, Dolphinarium Show, or it could be in the Bruges, or it could be in Las Vegas. They don't know. They're just seeing a concrete box. You wouldn't do that to a snake. You wouldn't put a snake in a, in a, in a display it in a zoo. The snake has tree limbs to climb on. It has grass, you know, and rocks to hide from the public. The dolphin is just in a concrete box. It's, it, their primary sense is sonar. Our primary sense is light. We are visually oriented, not dolphins. It's the only animal in the zoo that uh, is it's sound oriented, and we deprive them of the ability to use that, to use their sonar. Oh, they don't need it, the vet will tell you, you know. But, uh, actually, they, they are, that is their primary sense. So we're, they get involved in primary, they get involved in uh, uh, sensory deprivation, deprived of swimming. 40 miles a day. Living is doing things. Living is not going around a circle in uh, a concrete box. Thank you. Mr. Yes. Um, so if I hear you right, there's one really worse in the world, that's Indonesia, and um, the rest are all actually a bit the same. Uh, what I'm trying to find out is if you see the people that are holding the dolphins, um, I think in one dolphinarium they're doing that better than in another just not from the point of view of a dolphin but the the people that uh, are training them uh, feeding them and uh, make sure they're they're being healthy for example is that better or worse in Harderwijk than anywhere else it's all basically the same um, look we could put you in I just went to the bathroom, it's a very small room. I could put you in that room for the rest of your life and bring you the best food in the world and uh, you know, give you the medical attention you need. But at some point you want to go for a walk probably and you're going to go crazy after a while. You're going to become psychotic and that's what happens to them. They're, just because they're alive doesn't mean they're living. Living is doing things. It's not just somebody putting a fish in your mouth, it's the chase, chasing the fish. That's what life is about. We're depriving them of their life. Freedom is about choices and decisions. We deprive them of that. The hardback dolphins have no decisions. And when you call them a pod, they're not really a pod. They're put together there uh, by the dolphin trainers and the veterinarian. We're trying to control their social dynamics. They do that on their own in the wild. We can't do that. I can tell you as the head trainer of this aquarium, we cannot control their social dynamics. It's like two guys in a cell in a prison somewhere. They may not get along, and that's just the way it is. And that's what's happening to Morgan, by the way. I monitor Morgan, the orca that was captured here. Say he was stranded, but somehow he became the private property of SeaWorld. If you go to their website, they list Morgan, probably worth $25 million, as one of their assets. How did Morgan become the private property of this multi-billion dollar corporation? It's like a gift to an organization that's had 60 or more dead orcas on their hands. Uh, There's just so much injustice. So yeah, Morgan is there and um, jumping out of the water. It's on my website. You can see it. Morgan would never do that in the wild. He's leaving that water and coming up on the stage and frightened and sitting there for 10 minutes because the others, it's kind of like the new kid in town on the playground is getting bullied. That's what's happening to Morgan in this small tank in uh, Tenerife. 
That's another great injustice, what we're doing to Morgan. Who says he can't be released, she cannot be released into the wild? Nobody has proven, there's no scientific documentation to substantiate the claim that Morgan cannot go back to Norway and be free, or go to a, go to a uh, sanctuary at least. They have enough money to do that. They may, this is a multi-billion dollar corporation. That's pocket change for them to create a sanctuary for Morgan and others. Mrs. Kozukaya. Thank you. I've never been to a dolphin arium. I, I didn't take my son to see a dolphin at a dolphin arium too. Not because I thought at the time it's very wrong to go there, but because I thought I, I don't think I like these tricks and, and so on. So I didn't feel the urge to go to a dolphin arium. But there are lots of people who think that it's educational because not many children seeing dolphins on the wild in an ocean. So for them, it's also some kind of an educational situation to go to the dolphin area. How can you change the view of people? Thank you. So Barry? Yeah. Um, this is true. These children would never see a dolphin if you didn't, uh, or, or an orca, if we didn't uh, have them there. These very same children are never going to see a snow leopard. So what do we do? Go to the Himalayas and drag a snow leopard into the room? No. We need to teach our children to control their desires. That's the key to solving all of our environmental issues, controlling our desires. You do not have to see a dolphin in captivity to be educated about a dolphin. You weren't here earlier, I don't think. I was talking about my 11-year-old daughter who knows all about dinosaurs. She's never seen a dinosaur. The problem is we have all these years dolphin area. So people have the idea we are trying to educate our children. That's the view of lots of people. So in order to change this situation, you have to change the view of people too. So how do you do that in order to get there where you want us to be? <laughs> well, that's a very good question. And the, the answer is the best way to bring about change for the common good is by example. Holland would just stand up and say, no, we, we, we've, we've examined this and we find that there is no educational value to it. Yeah, they're, they're being educated, but they're being educated about all the wrong things and they're being miseducated in the process. So uh, the best way to bring about change for the common good is by example. Uh, to end it, to abolish it. That's the best way and, and retire them with dignity and quality and let them live out their life and uh, not breed in captivity and eventually it will go away. They'll be around for a long time and it's important how we identify them to the children. That's what's educational. We're miseducating children by lying to them. They lie to these children. Another question. Mr. Wassenberg. Yes, thank you. Um, Mr. Barry, you'll probably know that the use of uh, wild animals in circuses is forbidden uh, in the Netherlands, whereas the use of wild animals in the dolphinarium, dolphins, uh, is still allowed. And the difference is, as, is explained as follows. Circuses travel, whereas the dolphinarium is on one place. So it's not traveling, so it's no circus. Could you reflect on that, on the difference? Mr. Berry. One of the most successful circuses with elephants and tigers and lions is the Big Apple Circus in New York City. It does not travel anywhere. It's there all year round. It's a circus. Uh, the hardback dolphins travel. The traveling dolphin circus travels. It travels. They ship them to Spain. They ship them to Tenerife. They ship them to the places. They're selling them. It's a it's a it's a, a dolphin breeding farm. Um, it's a circus. It's it's kind of like I don't know how many people are familiar with this. It's a classic story in America. It's called Rumble Stiltskin. It's about the emperor. The emperor's wearing a fine suit of golden cloth, 
They're saying that this is not a circus. What they're saying is, I'm wearing a suit of fine golden cloth. Actually, they're naked. The, the emperor is naked. He's not actually wearing this. And it's the same thing. Just because we call it a zoo, it's not a zoo. And you can fool people for a little while, but eventually they're going to realize this is a circus. I watched that show. As a matter of fact, I'm going to Sweden to do the same thing in July. And I've seen that show. I was there two years ago. That's a full-blown uh, Las Vegas show, much like this one. This one is a lot of lights and dazzling. And, and they try to trick you with environmental slogans and uh, yeah, cleaning up the beach and all the recycling and all that, but it's to get your attention away from, don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain, you know? It's a circus. Okay. If, it, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, are there other questions of the members of parliament? No? All clear? Okay. Well, some people say, and I have one last question, some people say that if these dolphins do not exercise doing shows. The dolphins will be far less off, and they will be having a lot of welfare problems then. So it's actually beneficial for them to do some shows, to, to exercise. What's your opinion on that? Well, they're right. They do have to exercise. They, the muscles atrophy. They already have, because as I say, dolphins travel 40 miles a day, and they're moving, constantly moving for miles and miles. So they're, they're already atrophied. Uh, but they can do these flips and all these silly tricks. Uh, so when children go to the sanctuary, we're going to tell them the truth. They need to exercise, and we're going to exercise them now. Please do not applaud. We should never applaud any wild animal performing for us. They're not performing for you. We have to do this. They have to exercise, and we're going to feed them. Uh, a dolphin is very different than a dog, which will do a trick for, do anything for a pat on the head for attention. That's not true with a dolphin. Everything they do is for food reward. It's the only animal in the zoo that has to do that. So there's a way to exercise them. Uh, and they can exercise themselves if you put them in a very, very large lagoon, natural lagoon, and we have that. We have that. I can't talk about, too much about that, but I can tell you that, that that's not a problem. They will continue to exercise in the dolphin, in the uh, sanctuary. Uh -huh. the, uh, they have to do that. But as far as doing that in the, in the dolphinarium and then charging people money to see these stupid tricks, no, that's, that's hocus pocus. Well, then I would like to conclude and uh, end this meeting. I would like to thank you, Mr. Berry, for your time and all your, 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 your knowledge and your experience about uh, training dolphins and keeping dolphins in captivity. Um, well, if no one has have another question, then thank you, the audience, for being here. Thank you for listening. And then I'll yeah, just wrap this meeting up. Thank you.